In today's video, I'm gonna share with you guys the sneakiest bait that I've ever used for catching suspended bass. Here's a quick look at it right here. You guys aren't gonna to wanna to miss this one. What I wanna focus on today is a bait that I've really kept quiet for probably the last three or four seasons. Um, and it's a bait that I use quite a bit for live scope. But this is a phenomenal technique anytime you have suspended bass over deep or moderate deep depth ranges. And the bait that I wanna talk about today is this little screw head bait right here. It's a bait that has a blade that spins around with a small paddle tail swim bait on the back. What you guys are gonna say, this is no secret, this bait has been around a long time, but the way that we're utilizing this is different than your straight standard swim bait retrieve. This is a bait that I'm using to dead stall in the water, cast it out, let it sink down to 10, 15 foot of water, and get almost perfectly still when this bait is held in place and it catches a lot of big bass. Do we have each other? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, oh my god. Dude, my my drag slip. Dude, my line is tank. Oh. My line's tangled somewhere on my rod. I can't reel. Am I? Yours is huge. Yeah. Brennan, my god, dude. <laughs> Hang on. I need some help. <laughs> dude. That's crazy. You got a stud. Look at that thing. Holy, mine is a baby compared to that. Brennan, this is another six pounder, I think. <laughs> yeah, I think so. So this is very similar to the tight lining technique that is known quite a bit down south. A lot of guys use this on those highland reservoirs. But what makes this so unique is with that blade and with the small paddle tail swim bait on the back, you can pretty much hold this bait in place and get it to almost not move forward. This is something I've been trying to achieve for a really long time, um, especially with forward facing sonar and you're seeing fish suspended and become pretty inactive. Um, I've been looking for a technique that really holds a bait in place, presents a bait in front of fish, and this is the best that I can come up with that really doesn't have much forward movement at all. Now what makes this bait so unique is it's also relatively heavy. This is an eighth ounce head, so when you look at this bait, it's got an eighth ounce head, it's a standard jig head that I pour with the Do It Molds Diner Shiner. And then this is a small prop um, and a small swim bait on the back of this. But what's so unique about this is it gets down relatively quickly, but when I start the forward retrieve and that fish starts to come up behind this bait, I can stop my reel and get this bait to almost dead stall in front of those fish. It doesn't want a pendulum forward because this blade and this little tail tends to hold this bait in place better than standard jig heads. A lot of guys are using that standard Domeki rig where you have a 90 degree line tied jig head just like this and a straight tail minnow. But the problem with that is that bait wants to pendulum forward and move away from those bass. So when you get really pressured fish that have seen other forward facing sonar baits, this is a technique you can use to stall in front of those fish. Now what I'm doing with this, there are a couple of heads on the market that you guys can buy um, that do have this prop behind them. I'm gonna have them linked down in the description below. But what I like to do is take the Diner Shiner mold from Do It Molds, pour an eighth ounce head, and you can go all the way up to like three eighths of an ounce if you wanna get it really, really deep. Um, and I put a little prop blade on there. Now I put two little um, washers, cup washers, that's gonna help keep that prop blade in place. And what this bait does is as that bait comes forward through the water, that prop blade spins. So the prop blade is creating negative resistance, it's holding this bait almost virtually in place when I stall my retrieve, and it's keeping this bait positioned in front of those fish. So essentially, the technique is you cast this out, and it works really well when you're looking at them on forward facing, but you can do the same thing if you're just fishing a really productive area. You count it down to depth, it's typically about a foot a second, and then you slowly retrieve it. And I'm talking like you're just barely picking up any slack. And it's a crawl. And what this bait is doing 
is holding in front of those fish. And I want this bait to move as slowly as possible. And I'm fishing super high percentage areas. I'm fishing areas where I know bass are at and I know they're suspended. Whether you see them on your 2D, whether you have forward facing, it's a bait that you can really cover suspended depths with. And the other great thing is when you're fishing in clean water situations, these fish will actually come up to this bait to take a look at it. It presents this bait in a way that other baits can't. So when you use a slow mid-strolling style retrieve, you're getting that bait to come forward looking supernatural, looking like just a singular small bait fish coming through the water, holding in place that provides a really easy meal for these fish. So when we start to look at the overall gear that I'm using for this, I like to use a really long rod. So I'm fishing a TFO 7 foot 6 medium light rod. This is a moderate fast action. And this is actually my hair jig rod. This is the rod that I designed for them for hair jig fishing. But I'm fishing a super light wire hook. This is a Gamagatsu 111 or a Victory 1011 one knot hook on here so it's a really light wire hook and having that longer rod lets me get this bait way away from the boat. I'm looking to cover water as slowly as possible so having a rod that can really get this bait away from you uh, is really important. I'm also fishing it on a super long fluorocarbon leader. This is six pound test sunline sniper and it's probably a 30 to 35 foot fluorocarbon top shot leader. The reason I want that is it keeps that bait running as horizontal as I possibly can get it. That fluorocarbon is going to sink to depth and rather than that braid that's going to want to lift that bait, it's going to really keep that bait tracking very, very horizontal. Now this is something I learned from David Swanside uh, with Duo Realis, especially when you're fishing a spy bait. It's a very similar technique that allows the bait to track as horizontal as possible by using a really long fluorocarbon leader that's going to sink down in line with that bait. The other key is I'm using really light braided line. This is 8 pound test braided line. Um, so it's really thin diameter general setup. And I really focus on line diameter when I'm looking at techniques like this um, as opposed to just pound test. And that 6 pound test has a really thin line diameter to the pound test strength that it is. So I would recommend you guys starting to pay a little bit more attention to that uh, if you're not already. But you can find them on most of the tackle retailer websites as well as uh, I believe Sunline site itself. Then I'm going to pair this with a moderate speed gear ratio reel. The biggest mistake I see a lot of people making as reels become more and more high speed is picking up super high speed gear ratio reels all the time. This is a Fluger Supreme. It's a 5 2 to 1 gear ratio I believe. So it picks up line a little bit more slowly and then I'm just creeping this thing. I'm barely turning the handle at all and if you guys watch these clips right here you're going to notice that I'm barely turning the handle. Once that bait gets down to depth I want it to just stall and hold in place. Smallmouth. On the graph. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Chunky. Well, a little swimmy swim. Homemade spin head on a little swimmy swim in the perch color. Saw him on the graph and he came over and ate it. These fish are really hard to catch, but like if you're seeing the onesie twosies on the graph, they tend to be smallmouth, big pods of fish. They tend to be the walleye. Um, and this is a little spin head that I'm throwing. Same rod that I'm throwing that hair jig on. It's a 763 from TFO, the one I helped design. It's perfect for this thing. You can throw it forever. It loads up deep in the blank, keeps these fish pinned on these light little single hooks. So that's the overall retrieve that I'm using with this bait. Count it down about a foot a second. Get it to the direction or the, the depth that you want it to be at. And slowly turn the handle that's going to get that bait stalling itself, stalling its way through the water column and it's going to get you a lot of bites. The other key component that I want to mention that I believe is a really big factor in having success with the setup is using a small swim bait on the back. Now this is a Bass Magnet Lures 3 inch swim bait. This is a perch color. It's probably the most natural or realistic color that I've ever seen in my life. Really clear translucent belly, some green on the back with some orange flake and it looks really really natural but you want this bait to match the forage that you're fishing and 
unlike a lot of Demiki rig techniques or mid strolling techniques, you want that bait to have a paddle tail. That paddle tail provides extra resistance. It's going to help that bait slow itself down. I know this is contrary to a lot of Demiki rigging techniques or tight lining techniques where you want a straight tail bait. You want a bait that has a paddle tail, it's going to help that bait slow itself down. Now I also want a very narrow slender style body because I want this bait to kick at really slow speeds. I want this bait to have that tail kick, have that ability for that tail to work because it's going to help slow this bait down. So using a small bait like this 3 inch bass magnet lures swim bait is, is really really important. There's a couple of other more readily available options um, like your Kytec Easy Shiner. I would go with your three inch or three and a half inch size. When you start to get up into that four inch size, you start to kind of impact the way this bait's gonna move a little bit. Um, but I would go three, three and a half inch, maybe up to four inch size, easy shiner, but nothing really larger than that from my experience with this technique. Another really great one is this Megaboss Haze Dong Shad. It's a really small profile body. It kicks at ultra slow speeds. It's a phenomenal drop shot bait too, but it's a bait that you can really put on the back there that kicks at really slow speeds, looks really natural, and it just will help this bait slow itself down. The other bait that I've been playing with quite a bit is the Do It Molds Slick Shiner. Um, Brennan from Do It Molds brought these up last year. Um, I've been able to pour up quite a few myself, but it's a four inch size bait. Uh, looks very similar to, to that Easy Shiner. But as you guys can tell, that tail kicks at ultra slow speeds. It's a little bit bigger body profile, but you can bite the head down and just make it fit that bait really effectively. So that's the technique. This is a technique that I've kind of kept it under wraps for the last three or four seasons, especially with forward-facing sonar. It's a really, really powerful bait. Whether or not you have that technology, you can utilize this technique to catch some more suspended bass. If you guys want to check out this bait in action, click this video right here. If you guys haven't already subscribed, hit the subscribe button. If you have any questions or comments, hit me up down in the comment section down below. Check out all the baits, link down there as well. Thank you guys for watching. Take care, tight lines. God bless. Pursue your passion.